Our economy is in trouble, but Richard Duncan has a solution. The chief economist at Black Horse Asset Management, he's also worked at the World Bank and served as the global head of investment strategy at ABN AMRO Asset Management. His new book is The Corruption of Capitalism. Richard, thanks for being here. Thank you. So back in 2008, everyone knew we were in big trouble. But right now, the perception is things are turning around, looking up green shoots, and soon the world will be back to normal. In your book, you say that perception is actually just a pipe dream. That's right. Everyone needs to understand that we are being supported by government life support. For example, last year, the U.S. economy shrank by 2%, but the budget deficit was 10% of GDP. So had it not been for this 10% of GDP budget deficit, the economy wouldn't have shrunk by only 2%. It would have been minus 2 plus minus 10 minus 12 plus a multiplier. The economy would have contracted by 15%. Unemployment would have gone above 20%. It would have been a complete replay of the Great Depression. And this year is the same. This year we're looking at an 11% of GDP budget deficit. So we're on government life support. And it's going to remain like this for a number of years because the private sector is broken. So what you're saying is hundreds of billions of dollars are flowing from the government into the economy, and if it were not for that, the economy would be in deep trouble. That's right. Uh, in fact, $1.6 trillion this year. Interestingly, here you clearly think deficits are a big problem. You despise them. And yet, in your book, you write, we can't live without it. Okay, I think there are three important lessons that U.S. policymakers should learn from Japan's experience, with, uh, their post-bubble experience. Their bubble popped in, in 1990, 20 years ago. The first lesson is when a giant bubble pops, it's necessary for the government to support the economy with massive budget deficits for far longer than anyone thinks. Even now, the Congressional Budget Office is projecting $10 trillion worth of budget deficits over the next 10 years. Okay, so point number two, though, is that these budget deficits are much easier to finance than people currently realize. Japan has 200% government debt to GDP, but the 10-year bond yield in Japan is only 1.4%, meaning that it's very cheap to finance that government debt. And the third and most important lesson that we need to learn from Japan's experience is not to waste all this money that's going to be spent building bridges to nowhere the way that they did, but to spend the money wisely to restructure the American economy to actually make it viable again. That's an interesting point. In your book, you, you talk about how that money should be spent, and you say the government should invest in three 21st century industries. Can you explain that? Right. So this money is going to be spent one way or the other. It's just a matter of whether it's wasted, frittered away, and stolen by special interest groups, or if we actually spend it wisely, restructuring the economy. So in the book, instead of spending $10 trillion of de budget deficits over the next 10 years, I propose we spend 13 trillion. An extra 3 trillion, the government should pump a trillion dollars into solar energy, a trillion dollars into genetic engineering and biotechnology, and a trillion dollars into nanotechnology. This would give us an unassailable lead in 21st century industries and, in fact, lock in another American century. There's another point in your book I wanted to get to. Uh, you write that the financial industry has become a menace to society. Right now, the three largest U.S. banks control most of this country's deposits. And at the same time, these same banks are speculating in the derivatives market at the rate of trillions of dollars a day. This is a recipe for catastrophe. Uh, they blew up in 2008, had to be rescued, and now they still have not been reformed. They should be broken up into small, very tightly regulated utilities. And instead of being too big to fail, they should be made too regulated to fail. Now, what about these side activities, this proprietary trading? Would you stop that, or would you just let other companies do that that don't have a government backstop? Banks should be banks, and they should lend money, and that's all they should do. Speculators and investment banks should be allowed to do whatever they want to do with their own money or their investors' money. But they shouldn't be rescued by the government. They shouldn't be allowed to be too big to fail. As an investor, looking at this somewhat uncertain future, what should I do? It's important to have a broadly diversified portfolio. I think gold is the surest bet. I, I believe that gold is likely to go up 10% a year on average for the rest of our lives. There may be some years when it drops 30%, but on average, gold seems to be the surest bet. But still, no one should put his or her eggs all in one basket, not even a golden basket. So diversification is important. I would also have in my portfolio blue chip stocks with a high dividend yield in this country and other countries. Also government bonds, U.S. government bonds and German government bonds. Next, I would recommend, in addition to, to gold, uh, 
buying a residential uh, building to rent out. And finally, I would recommend debt, fixed interest rate debt to finance your residential building. And that way you'd be very broadly diversified. And the, way it's, the reason it's important to be so diversified is because we are on government life support. No one can be certain what the government's going to do. If they spend too much money, we're going to get very high rates of inflation. That would be bad for bonds and stocks, but that would be very good for commodities. And meanwhile, your debt would evaporate and you would still have rental income. On the other hand, if they, the government spends too little money, we're going to have deflation. That would be bad for commodities, but good for bonds, and you'll still have your rental income. The rents might go down, but so would the price of everything else. So because we can't be sure what the government's going to do, and because the government is driving this economy now, uh, diversification is the only way to have proper insurance. Very interesting. Thank you, Richard Duncan. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for watching.